What's up YouTube, welcome back to another video on my channel Skotrix and today as you can see we are back on NBA 2K21 next gen but not on the actual game. Today we are going to be back on this screen right here ranking all of the best playmaking badges in NBA 2K21 next gen. And if you guys don't know, yesterday I did the best shooting badges ranked and the day before that I did finishing badges and tomorrow I will be doing defense but today is going to be the best playmaking badges and I'm going to be ranking them from the S tier right here which is the best all the way down to the F tier which is the worst obviously and along with the ranking I'll also do a brief breakdown of what the badge does and an explanation of why I rank it where I rank it so without any further ado let's get right into the video here All right, so the first badge right here we have is Ankle Breaker. I'm gonna be going in alphabetical order. So the first one right here is Ankle Breaker. And honestly, all of the playmaking badges this year are decent. So some ones that are gonna be decent will still be in lower tiers just because there's not really any useless playmaking badges. So I'm gonna put Ankle Breaker into the C tier right here, but this doesn't mean that it's a terrible badge. It's just not as good as some other playmaking badges. Now, obviously what Ankle Breaker does is it helps you break ankles when you're dribbling, helps you drop defenders or whatever, but you definitely do not need the Ankle Breaker Badge to get ankle breakers this year it does help quite a bit it seems to help more than it did the last two years and what i mean by that is 2k21 current gen and 2k20 but it still doesn't help as much as i feel it should so that's why i'm putting in the c category right here it's a good badge but it's not amazing and there's definitely better playmaking badges that work more consistently but that's ankle breaker right there next up we have bailout and I'm going to put Bailout all the way down to the F tier. Again, doesn't mean it's a terrible badge, but honestly, you can make Bailout passes pretty easily without the Bailout badge this year. So I honestly don't see any purpose for it at all, unless you have like a super low pass accuracy, which if you have a super low pass accuracy, you're probably not going to have enough badges to put this badge on anyways. This isn't like 2K20 where your Bailout passes are just automatically destined to go out of bounds. You should be good making Bailout passes without the badge. So I'm putting in the F category right here, just because basically every other playmaking badge is better than this one. So it has to go into a low tier right there but next up we have another badge that's not as good and that's break starter i'm gonna put break starter into the e category right here this badge is really really not that important the only reason i'm putting it in the e category instead of the f category is because it might be useful for the rec or pro m 5v5 which a lot of people are playing right now in the game so that's why i'm putting it in the e category but honestly you really don't need this badge my big man build has a 25 pass accuracy and in the 3v3 courts in the park i'm making full court passes no problem they're not perfectly on target but they're pretty good they never really go out of bounds and that's with a 25 pass accuracy so i can't really imagine any situation where you would need this badge as an essential badge to have to be able to make full court passes. It's really not that important. There's so many, so many, so many better badges. That's why Break Starter goes into the E category right here. And next up we have Bullet Pass. And this is one of the three new playmaking badges that they added this year. And this badge is actually decent. I'm gonna put it into the D category, but it's okay. It's not an essential badge though. That's why it's going down here. What it does is it speeds up how quickly you can get the ball out of your hands as well as the overall velocity of the pass so you'll throw faster passes which is good but i mean if you think about a badge like this compared to a badge like dimer would you rather have a badge that throws faster passes or have a badge that when you throw a pass the person catches it they have a higher chance of making it it seems like a pretty obvious choice that the second one would be a better badge so i don't really see the point in putting this badge on unless you have at least maybe 25 playmaking badges then you could definitely invest in this but it's more of a luxury badge that's good if you have a ton of badges and you can get all the important ones anyways but it's not as useful if you can't get the more important badges first so that's why i'm putting bullet passer into the d category right here and now we have the badge that i just mentioned and that's dimer and i'm gonna put dimer into the a category here and this is a really really good badge what it does is when you're in the half court and you throw a pass to somebody who's open and they shoot it boosts their shot percentage so that's pretty good i mean i can't really think of many playmaking badges that would be more important than dimer because obviously if you are a playmaker and you have a lot of playmaking badges you're gonna want to be able to make plays for your teammates and dimer's probably the most important badge for doing that and considering that it works good in basically every single mode this is a super must-have badge for basically any playmaker build in the game you're definitely going to want to have dimer onto gold or hall of fame or as high as you can get it but next up right here we have downhill and i'm going to put downhill into the c category this is a pretty underrated badge overall. I think it's really, really good for big men that have decent speed. So if you get like a defensive rebound, you can run down the floor pretty fast and get to the rim a lot faster than a lot of other big men will be able to get back on defense. So Dimer is a pretty good badge, especially with how high you can have your speed with ball on big men and that a lot of people are playing Rec and Pro-Am 5v5, which this is a really, really good badge for. But it's also good for 3v3 in the park. It's basically useless for 2v2 in the park. So if that's what you play, this isn't the badge for you. But for 3v3, Rec, Pro-Am, all of that, 
that. This is a really, really good badge if you're a big man. Not as much if you're a guard, but it can have a usage if you're a guard, even though I wouldn't consider putting it on unless you have at least 20 to 25 playmaking badges because there is so so many more important badges than this for a guard but next up right here we have floor general and i'm gonna put floor general into the b category this really could go into the a category with dimer but i'm gonna put it into the b category just because i think it's slightly not as important what floor general does is it gives a boost to your teammates attributes so if you have this badge onto bronze it will give all of your teammates that are on the floor with you a plus one attribute boost to all of their offensive stats at silver it's plus two at gold Gold, it's plus three and at hall of fame it's plus four so if they have a 95 three-pointer and you have hall of fame floor general on that's going to go up to a 99 three-pointer for your teammates so it's a pretty good badge but not essential for most builds unless you have at least i would say 15 to 20 playmaking badges and really only one person on the floor needs to have this badge so if you have like two guards in a 3v3 game or something only one of them really needs floor general and if you're playing rec or something only the point guard really needs floor general or maybe you could put it under the shooting guard or something if he can get it and that would probably work really good as well but one thing that floor general does do is it shows you where your teammates hot zones are so if you have this badge on and you look at your teammates on the floor you'll be able to see by their feet a red ring if they're standing in a hot zone so that's a nice little thing not too important but you will know where your teammates hot zones are if you have this badge equipped which is kind of cool but again not too important and next up right here we have the first s category badge and that is going to be handles for days this is a super, super, super important playmaking badge. Maybe the most important playmaking badge, maybe the second most, but either way, this is an essential badge for literally any guard build any wing build and even some big man build if you have a decent ball handle on and you do a little bit of dribble moves or whatever this is in a super 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 essential badge definitely an s category badge and i recommend getting this badge on as soon as possible for any dribbling build so that you can dribble as long as possible without running out of stamina but next up right here we have needle threader and i'm going to move needle threader down to the d category if you have a decent amount of finish or playmaking badges i recommend getting this badge onto bronze but you really don't need it much higher than that especially since a lot of players this year don't have their steel upgraded on their build so a lot of people aren't even getting passing lane steals like that obviously there are still a lot of builds that have the steel upgraded but not as much as there was in years past in 2k so you can really get away with having needle threader on a lower tier like bronze or even not having it at all but still it's not a terrible badge it is decent that's why i'm putting it in the d category right here so if you find yourself getting a lot of passes stolen from you or intercepted from you put this badge onto bronze it should help out quite a bit and yeah you should be good that's needle threader and next up we have quick first step right here and i'm gonna put quick first step also into the s category this is a pretty important badge one of the more important playmaking badges for sure and it really is important for any build whether you're a guard a wing a big man it doesn't matter quick first step is a super 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 important badge what it does is when you're driving out of a triple threat or a size up move it gives the ball handler access to quicker and more effective launches which is pretty important if you're dribbling or even if you're not dribbling if you're standing in the triple threat stance you're definitely going to be wanting to launch as fast as possible so you can get by your defender before they have time to react so quick first step is a super important badge definitely s category badge and i recommend getting on for every single build next up right here we have space creator I'm going to put Space Creator into the C category. It could go into the B category. It really is a decent badge for dribbling. What it does is when performing step back moves or shots, there's a higher chance of successfully creating separation from your opponent. So if you're a player that dribbles a lot and does step back moves a lot, step back shots a lot, maybe like a shot creator or a play shot or something like that, you're definitely going to want to put this badge on to at least bronze. It's also good on Golder Hall of Fame if you can get it up there if you have enough badge points, but onto bronze at least because it really does help you get a lot lot of extra space from the defender when you have this badge equipped but if you're not doing those step back shots or step back dribble moves it's basically useless so you really don't need it if you're a big man or a wing or you're just not a build that dribbles a lot but next up right here we have another one of the new badges and this is going to be special delivery now i'm going to put special delivery into the b category it is sort of a specific badge that you can kind of decide if you want basically what it does is it gives a takeover boost to both you the passer who has the badge equipped and the receiver after you throw a flashy pass to them so that's really really good obviously a lot of these takeover badges are pretty good and this one's no different it is a pretty good badge but it only works specifically for certain builds who are willing to throw flashy passes if you're not willing to throw flashy passes you probably don't need it because it really won't do anything 
to help you out. But another thing that this badge does is it increases alley-oop throw success and shot chance for receivers after a flashy pass. So that's decent as well, but really the most important thing about having this badge is the takeover boost that both you and the person who catches the ball will get. So it's not like flashy passer from last year where only the person who catches the ball and scores will get the takeover boost. The person who passes the ball also gets it. So that's really, really good. But again, if you're not even throwing flashy passes in the first place, you probably don't need this badge. But next up right here, we have stop and go. And I'm going to put this one pretty low right here. I'm going to put it down to the E category. I'm personally not a big fan of stop and go. And a lot of competitive players never really use this badge at all. Not because people don't want to stop and go fast. Obviously, that would be really, really good if that's all the badge did. But it also unlocks these weird animations. The 2K calls them unique stop and launch explosive animations or whatever. But they're really not that good. The default animations that you have for not having this badge equipped are a lot better. And that's why a lot of players, including myself, don't use this badge and don't really recommend it for other people to use. But if you want to put it on and give it a shot, go ahead. Maybe you'll like it. But I think Quick First Step is a 10 times better alternative to stop and go. So I'm putting it into the E category right here. And next up, we have another dribbling badge and that's going to be tight handles. I'll put tight handles into the B category. It really is on par with Space Creator here. And they're really both in between the C and the B category. But I'll put tight handles in the B category just because I think it is a good badge to put just on bronze. And it gives you a couple extra animations which is really really good I don't like putting it up to Hall of Fame all the way because it unlocks pro dribble moves or sorry park dribble moves at Hall of Fame which are all those crazy fancy dribble moves that you see your player do sometimes or that you've seen your player do sometimes in the past now you need to have tight handles on Hall of Fame to unlock those and I'm really not a big fan of those dribble moves but if you want those dribble moves put tight handles onto Hall of Fame and you'll unlock them but for me not really too important the thing that is really good about this badge and the reason I like just putting it onto bronze is it increases a player's ball handling ability in size up situations making it easier to break down your on ball defender so that's really really good if you put this badge onto bronze you'll notice just slight movements and slight things that your player will do along with slight ways that your opponent will react when you dribble just very very minor and you won't notice it all the time but there is definitely a minor effect of this badge on bronze even though a lot of people think it doesn't do anything the effect is really really minor that's why i only put it onto bronze but yeah that's tight handles right there decent badge not super amazing but pretty solid and next up right here we have unpluckable and this is another badge that a lot of people say doesn't do anything but I'm going to put it into the A category right here because it does help quite a bit. And one thing that a lot of people get wrong about this badge is a lot of people get the ball stolen from them when they're dribbling on bump steals or something where they dribble into the person or into the defender and lose the ball and wonder why unpluckable doesn't work. It's because unpluckable only works when the defender reaches for the steal and it really works best when you're doing dribble moves. So if you're just running up the court and you bump into somebody and lose the ball, unpluckable is not going to help you with that. You just got to be more careful when running not to bump into people and give up bump steals that's really the only advice i can give for that but unpluckable does help when you're dribbling by preventing defenders from getting as many steals so it's definitely an a category badge you could try out a few different tiers of it and see what you like the most whether it's bronze silver gold or hall of fame if you can get it onto hall of fame but yeah definitely one of the better playmaking badges in the game definitely an a category badge right here and the one badge that i missed is one of the new badges that i actually could not find the badge icon in high definition so i had to use another image it's the relay passer badge and this is just like a relay race thing or whatever for the icon that I'm using for the video. And I'm gonna put relay passer into the C category. This is a pretty decent badge. It's not as good as Dimer, but basically what it does is it's like the hockey assist version of Dimer. So basically what it does is it will give a shot boost to a player if you pass to somebody and then the player you pass to passes to somebody else and they shoot. So like a pass to assist type of situation, it'll basically act as a dimer type of badge, but for that situation where you pass to somebody and then the person who you pass to passes to the other person who shoots. Now I'm not sure if this badge works if you pass to somebody and then they pass back to you. I would assume it doesn't and that it only works in pass to assist type of situations, but I'm not sure even though I am pretty sure that it does not work unless you pass to somebody and then they pass to somebody else. So if you're playing twos, this is a completely useless badge. If you're playing threes, it could be useful if you have a lot of ball movement on your team. And same thing in rec, it's really a more useful badge if you have a lot of ball movement. But honestly, I don't think it's as important as dimer because there's just not as many situations where you pass to somebody that and they pass to somebody else and shoot in a short period of time as there is that you just pass to somebody and they shoot in a short period of time. So that's why I'm putting it into the C category, not quite as high as Dimer. I just think Dimer is a much better investment for your playmaking badges 
and this one's just not as important unless you have at least 20 to 25 playmaking badges and you have a lot of ball movement on your team so that's a c category badge middle of the pack type of badge and that's actually the last playmaking badge right here there is 16 playmaking badges in total in nba 2k 21 next gen and this is how i rank them right here if you disagree and you think i should move some badges up or down let me know in the comment section below i love to hear what you guys think and what your experiences have been with these badges so far but yeah that's gonna be it for the video hopefully you guys enjoy if you did make sure you like subscribe to my channel if you're new i upload daily nba 2k 21 content like i said best defense badges coming tomorrow so make sure you sub right now so you don't miss that but yeah that's gonna be it love y'all all right peace